Are you ready? Right. What's that song We're from? in pink and purple today. Are you ready? You know, Are you ready band. for it? Yeah. Are you ready for it? Joe yeah. Taylor Swift. Dun, dun, dun. dun. What are we always saying? I don't know. Dun, dun. Are you ready for it? Let me... Da, 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 da. Breaking da, da, free. Da, da, da. No. We're I'm... singing different... <gasps> We're singing different songs. We're singing High School Musical. We're soaring, flying. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, chuck me head. Let's get on with the episode. <laughs> right, okay. Right. We're in pink and purple because on Wednesdays we have pink. Oh my God, on Wednesdays we wear purple. <laughs> Skills. And yeah. on that note, let's go into what's releasing today, guys. Oh Big my God, news. sorry. This is so Major apt. news. Major news. The cause of this podcast, the name came from this. The thing. inspiration behind mm. the whole podcast. A big, a pivotal moment in history today. It actually is. Mean Girls, the movie. The movie. The new one comes out The today. musical movie. I'm not normally mm. huge on musicals, but I do have a select few that are my all-time favorite films, like Mamma Mia. Oh yeah, obsessed, 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 and you know, obviously, Mean Girls and is shallow. Like my favorite film. In the shallow, shallow, country strong. You've still not watched it, have you? Yeah, I have. I have. I have. Wait, what? Country strong. Country strong. Yeah. No. <gasps> Gasp. No, I honestly gasp. Melissa, you need to watch that with Toby tonight. You will. It will be your favorite film you've ever watched. Okay. Guess who's in it? Blair Waldorf, main character. Shit. Yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow, other main character. Oh my God, and Gwyneth Paltrow sings in it? Yeah. What's that? She sings that lovely, lovely song with that man. I know, I have the song oh, on my phone. The song? Yeah, so I've got the whole album. Into the country strong, born again, in the way. Oh, I see different song. Going riding on. Something like that. She was with Chris Martin at Fuck. the time she was in the film, because I remember that she was like, you know, Chris wasn't sure if I'd be able to sing it properly. I remember seeing those interviews. God, she was mega in it. She's, that's actually, that's, that movie... It does like to me, bring chills through my bones. I remember so well she went and she gave Blair or Blair, Blair whatever her name oh, what was. Oh, what's Leighton Meester? Leighton Meester, a bit of her? advice. And she's like, she should take you over, like, her career or whatever. And she's like, leaving. And she was like, never take laxative, it never goes the way you want. And I just remember I took it on board. I was like, you never take a laxative, it yeah, never goes the way you want. And I always, God, that's brilliant. if I needed a laxative, I honestly, not, I often do. But, goop, that goop mindset was but coming I was through like, in her character. Never take it because she was like, "You just need a shit, well, not at the right time." Time never works. And I out honestly you. kept that piece of knowledge through all my teens. Well, that's great. I'm glad that Gwyneth passed on some wisdom to yeah. you. Right. Anyway, back onto the topic. Mean Girls. We've got Renee as rap. We've got Regi as Regina George, major. Major Regina. I mean, that is ultimately like the 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 best thing to play of all time. Sophie Habu is our very own Regina George in the um, musical. I actually that we would have preferred to have been Gretchen. I think she's iconic. Oh my god, Gretchen. She has batch. a little lip. Yeah, well. she's like, it's batch. It's just, I'm gonna make <laughs> batch happen. Like, so blinky. Oh my god. Oh my god. And so slobbery yeah. mouth. Like, ah. Always chewing gum. Yeah. No, that was more Katie or the, think, Karen. Oh yeah, Karen. Karen. Oh. Karen, is it? I'm a mouth star. Oh my god! I want to see Melissa. Da, that was so cute. When she pointed to the head thing. She, that I didn't know who Amanda Seyfried was when I first watched it, and then she became mega. Oh my god, she was huge on that. You know what? They're gonna. It's I, I, we haven't watched this new film, obviously, but it's they've got something really tough to try and like mm -hmm. stand up to, mm -hmm. or like what? Am but I they've also got Christopher Brainy, who you and I were in love with from the yeah, Summer I Turned Thirty. Like Summer I Turned Thirty. He's Mouth watering, but what is it about him? Because he's like a science he's kind like of boy, but he's fit. because he's a bit like deep and mysterious, and you he's can't got, like, tell what he's side thinking. Eyebrow, and, like you know, like that. And he's not like overwhelmingly handsome, but he's like sorry, a, a little bit like I don't know, like in a, in a different sort of box at all. Like I'm putting loads of weird faces, <laughs> but like there are some guys who like are like off face, like their faces it's are not wonky. symmetrical. They're not they're symmetrical, but they're sexy. I know, I know. Exactly he's got what you mean. sex appeal, mm -hmm. and it's like. His mouth like almost curls out. Like Miss Norbury's also in it. Norbury. Oh my god! Yeah, the original Tart has an Asia dot. She hasn't aged a mm. day. It's spooky. I love that character. She's also in um, loads of movies. She's in so many different things. We love her. I'm obsessed with who Regina George's like mum's going to be in it too. Like I can't wait for to see that. Okay, She's a big actress. Who, we, I love what, her. who I would cast as her mum. 
Um, I would do probably like the house bunny actress. I was going to say the same. Or, or the one from... Reese Witherspoon, I might. I feel like she would have done a great or, version Or, of. or, or. Um, has anyone watched Lincoln Lawyer, the yeah. PA? Oh, I can't remember. Not the movie, it. the series. Really good. Netflix. Oh, no, I haven't seen Anyway, Mitch, which Mean Girl character are you? Gretchen and Regina George, because we literally played it the other yeah, day. Yeah, I now. feel like that's who we are. I, I don't think Regina. We... I do not want to be the biggest bitch in school. Yeah, but everyone I, wants to be you. It's great. Yeah, do you remember when that so girl's like... power. And she cuts her boobs out and they're like... Oh, yeah, yeah. She just wears it. And then she's just like setting trends left, right and centre in high school. I would love to be that influential. I would she have loved to be. She the original influencer was Regina yeah. George. She took... Was that before Paris Hilton? Maybe. Probably. Regina George was like... Sick. Iconic. Iconic. Do you remember when she was like, I'm eating this fucking... And she like put on weight. She's wearing the blow. Oh my god, Chatsy. God, it's such a good movie. Oh my god, I love it. Oh, okay. I love it. You know her, her wig? You told me her wig cost like nine grand or something. I've never knew she wore a wig. So that film, she wore a wig and it was like the most one of the most expensive wigs they've ever made for a movie or something. And it was like nine grand or something crazy like that. Again, fountain of knowledge, guys. She knows this wig. Don't know why I know that. Someone told me that the other day. I think it was Hermione. And I was like, God, that's such a random fact. Probably because there's new movies coming out. Everyone's like going back to like the old things, you know? The OG, right. Fa favorite line would be, it's not trying to make that happen. It's not going to happen. Oh my God, that is so cute. Where did you get it? What bit's that? When she like compliments everyone or something. And then <laughs> that's the ugliest, uh, ugliest effing skirt I have ever seen. Oh yeah. That's the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. Oh my god, no, wait, what's an iconic quote for me, girls? Come on, we have to find something better. Stop than that. making Fetch Happens iconic. Yeah, that's great, but there must be something else. Um on Wednesdays we were pink. That's pretty iconic. Yeah, that's pretty fucking iconic, isn't it? Oh Golly, god, swear to Oops. Cute. She is a fugly slut. Yeah. <laughs> she likes it. You heard it here first. <laughs> There's actually some really outrageous lines in that film, but so Fugly great. is such a vicious word. I know. Like, if you say fugly, you are mean. Also, the word slut. I, like, like I don't really slut. remember the word I've said slut. Why do you like what you're a slut the whole time? I hate that. Slag, I hate. I Sket. hate. Sket. Oh, yeah, that's not allowed. Should be not allowed. It's such <laughs> Oh, my God, no. People no. call men C-U-N-T's, which is a dreadful word. We must, we must not move away from these vicious, vulgar words. Ultimate chick flick. Oh, Other than Mean Girls. Titanic is actually a flick. Stop, no. <gasps> the Just Go With It. I'm sorry. I Just know go it's with not it. the it's ultimate great. one. Dirty Dancing. I also love Dirty Dancing. Are, are they chick flicks? Bride Wars. Mean Girls, mean Girls. is the ultimate chick flick ever. <gasps> no, oh my no, god, no, John no, Tucker no. must die! John Tucker must die! That's like one of the best, best, best ones. She's the man. Don't love that one as much. It's I a great film, but I'm not like. Mm. Should I let you in on something? I don't like dirty dancing. Patrick Swayze is my ultimate ride or die. Like, it gave me really sex. bad vibes. I got really scared of it. I you didn't like that or Emmerdale. Because you wouldn't have understood it when you were young. No, no, if Emmerdale came on, Are I Are you would... honestly comparing Dirty no, no. Dancing to Emmerdale? Yeah, same, t same tone. <laughs> so... Criminal, criminal <laughs> chat from this side of the room. The noise. What's was... the theme tune? <laughs> da, 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 da. If no. Emmerdale came on, I would hysterically cry. That's not Emmerdale. That's, That's Simpsons. EastEnders. No, that was The Simpsons. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Ah, it's, honestly, I've never children. seen it if Emmerdale came on I would run and put my head under my mum's jumper I couldn't hear it or see it it's the most terrifying do they have scary guns and stuff no it Emmerdale. was bleak it was grey it was miserable I hated everyone on it I didn't uh, like it I no. hate it was it was like the Black Cauldron it was like a horror movie and my grandma watched it and I was honestly I it would send chills through me I couldn't go to my grandma's when it was on Okay, well, can we just talk about why you're relating that to Dirty Dancing? Because there are very few things. Extremely different. Right, so anyone who, like, any boyfriend, Jamie will know. Okay. I can't watch anything remotely bleak. Like, if it is it's not Emmerdale bleak. Dirty S, Dancing is not Dirty bleak. Dancing has the same grey tone as Emmerdale. It's grey. <laughs> it's a grey tone. As in, like, the colour scheme? Yeah. It's a bleak tone. It's the grading. It's great. And it's like M Doubt and it gives me M Doubt vibes and I can't watch it. It's because it's old fashioned. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. What about EastEnders? I also don't like EastEnders, but just because I, I don't, I'm not into it, but it never scared me. M Doubt made me feel like fully. I've uh, never seen so M Doubt. So sad. I wouldn't even be watch able to it and you'll start crying. I no, honestly... I don't think it's so, sort of TV. I'd like spend my time watching it. But like Coronation Street didn't make me scared at all. 
Emma Dale just sent chills through my bones. So Melissa and Sophie, it feels like you two both really know your chick flicks. Are you ready to do a chick flick quiz? We're more than ready. I'm going to read out some iconic quotes from some iconic chick flicks. You've got to buzz in with gruel, Melissa, and fetch Sophie and decide what film they're from. Gorgeous. Okay, we're in. Amazing. So here we go with question number one. Waiting for you is like waiting for rain in this drought. Useless and disappointing. (laughs) Oh Buzz in if you know it. I don't know it. Useless and disappointing. Oh my God, no, I do know it. It stars Hilary Duff and Chad Michael Murray from One Tree Hill. <laughs> Sam, fetch, Cinderella. Oh. Ding, ding, Story. ding. <laughs> Question Ooh. number two. When the head girl has earned my respect, then I will shake Good. her hand, biatch. Um, uh, ding, 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 ding. Uh, gruel, um, wild child. Yes. Oh my Before God. Melissa, Good even keel. Question number three. Whoever said orange is the new pink is seriously disturbed. Fetch. Mean Girls. Wrong. Grill, grill. I think it's Gossip Girl. No. Grill, fetch. Um, 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 Trini- St. Trinian's. It's actually Legally Blonde, so no point for either <laughs> of you. Oh my God, of course, Reese Witherspoon. Question thing. number four. <laughs> You're a virgin who can't drive. Fetch. Mean Girls. No. Nope. <laughs> Melissa. Oh my God. Oh my God, I know it. She's a man. You're a virgin, you can't drive. It stars Alicia Silverstone. Iggy Azalea did a music video inspired by this film. Paul Rudd's in it as well. It's from the 1990s. It is iconic. Oh, oh my God, oh, it's oh, all oh. they're dancing on the table. Oh, oh, um, she, does, she goes to the bar. Ugh, She's just not that into you. Oh my God, Clueless. Yes, so oh, point to you, Melissa. Amazing. And this is the final one. Oh my God, sorry. No, I could play this Why are we so mad at this? And what are you supposed to be? An obese leprechaun? Anyone can see I'm a stuffed olive. Fetch! Stuffed is right. Wild child. Um, St. Trinian's. Melissa. Oh my God. It's a British film. I don't know what that is. I'm a stuffed olive. What? It's British. Oh my God. I know exactly so which it is. British. <laughs> Angus Long's a perfect snogger. Yeah. Oh my God. I forgot Did that film existed. You know that actor Aaron lives Johnson. in Notting Hill. I honestly see him every day. And I, I've seen what house he comes Melissa. out of. Not I'm outing this. What? Aaron Johnson, you know, I went all the way to High Wickham when I was 15 and walked. <laughs> no, no. Do you not know this? Wait, wait. Do you not know this story? I don't know this story. Am I trapping myself? I, I, me and my friend Sophie Pettifer were so in love with Aaron Johnson. We Googled where he lived. He was like our age. We found out he lived in High Wickham. I must have been about 14. I took a train to High Wickham. I got out at High Wickham and I walked around High Wickham thinking, I will bump into him. We will fall in love and he will become my boyfriend. I was <laughs> gone ho. And when the movie, Angus Songs and Full Frontal Songing, stop. Perfect Songing. Perfect. Full Frontal No, that was the book. That was the book. Oh. When the movie finished, I was, I remember it so well. I was sat. You were in fully my, in love. I was at, actually at my grandma's. It was like Christmas Day. And me and my sister got it on DVD. Yeah. And it stopped. And I burst hysterical crying. And I was like, mum, I've. I won't ever have him. Like my heart was throbbing for him in that movie. Oh my god, that's mental that you actually fell in love with someone. I over the fell like that. in love with him. I think Zac Efron was quite a prominent person mm. in my childhood so, that I was obsessed with. And then young Leonardo, like when I watched mm. the Titanic, I was like, I genuinely no, it wasn't even in the Titanic. It was Romeo and Juliet. He was in. Well, I was like, I feel something, something. in my heart and my stomach for you. <laughs> like I genuinely. It was obviously also the first time I was like feeling like the women he feels as I was getting older. And I was like, oh I gosh. fancy you. And all, I could just, uh, yeah. Yeah, very moody. I remember Pirates of the Caribbean seeing Jack Sparrow and like oh, yeah. fully he having like tingle flattles. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, what the fuck me is that too. feeling? Like genuinely not like pal- palpitations. I was me, like, too, me too, me too, me too. So young exactly. in the cinema. And I was like, <laughs> Like I it can bear and it. I was like, what is this horrible feeling? It was me? And why can't I control it? And why can't I fix it? So oh God, there's been a few. Goodness. Oh my God, Leonardo. Peter Pan. The, the movie. Oh my God. How I was, could I forget? That I was, was my first love. That, that was, was my, my first, first love. love. No, Jack Sparrow was before that and then Peter Pan came out. No, Peter Pan for me was the first one. He I, was like, I, I was like, I would I I remember to wanting to my lick his skin. I wanted to lick his like golden skin. I really need to He was like golden, just flew in through the bedroom window and I was like, I want to fly in through my bedroom window. I actually remember like kind of I really can't but I used to like daydream that he'd do it I'd be like yeah. he's gonna just come come in the bedroom window <laughs> going we back were, 
Angus Young. Angus Thompson, perfect snogging man. So he's obviously with this woman who's like 20 years older mm, than him. That's when I knew my luck wasn't. Yeah, you know, we're not old enough. But I've seen him in Somerset, which is super weird. And then back in Notting Hill so, so many times. What's he looking like in real life? Gorgeous. Jamie's interviewed him. I also see him and his wife in Dalesford and I like get Maybe I see that them. it's him and his wife because I keep I keep thinking surely that's not the one and then it is the the wife because there's such an age gap I can't I can I can't like imagine how they are like how together. Old is she? I think she's in her sixties. She's twenty something years older than him. So am I alive. Dilemma, dilemma one. Okay, me. <laughs> okay, so dilemma one. Me and my boyfriend, let's call him Sam, have been together for seven years. He has moved in with me and my family, and I see him being in my life rather or so, I thought. Oh, no, I get really scared of reading these things. Same, it's just all coming to an end, isn't it? During lock... <laughs> isn't it? Ooh, flicked up. During lockdown, I found out that Sam... Oh no. During lockdown, I found out that Sam had slept with someone else. It literally bl- broke me. And as I was under the impression we were chartered sweethearts and destined to be together <gasps> forever. I confronted him about it and he didn't come clean straight away. And I broke up with him. But because we were living with each other and because of lockdown, he had no routes to go. So we ended up getting back together. So easily happened. So, so understand, understand that in lockdown, there's no one else to so go, go like cry your shoulders mm-hmm. on. Skip forward a couple of years, a girl messaged me and said she and Sam had got together on a night out. Shh. You're fucking kidding me, Sam. I know I should have ended it, but I didn't because I'm too scared of being on my what? own. Oh, no. I've never been single before and we spent every day together. No, no. I've recently become closer with friends, with one of his friends, let's just call him Joe, to the point where we've been hanging out, just me and him. Oh. On nights out, we gravitate towards each oh. other and have had some deep, deep conversations about lots of things, and in particular, my re- relationship with Sam. I enjoy spending time with Joe a lot. Okay. I wonder, I would never cheat on Sam, and even though Joe has said I'm attractive, I don't think he would go there with me. Quite a weird conversation to be having with your best, boyfriend's best mate. Best friend. I don't think he'd go there with me. I know that if this was the other way around, I wouldn't like Sam getting close with another mm. girl like that, especially if it was one of my friends. Is it time to end my relationship with Sam? I'm sc- too scared to do that as I really do love him and he's the only person I really have. Oh my this God, he's is not horrible. the only person you have. You've got your family, you've got friends. There is so many boys in the world. We all need to, I say my friend, Melissa, watched this interview with J- Shay Mitchell, you know, the one from mm. Priscilla, she's, I'm real. I'm real. And she basically was just like, if my guy cheats on me, I'll just find someone else. Like that. I'm not bothered. Like, if that's the way that you're going to treat me, I can very I easily cool find daddy. someone else. And she was like, we all need to just adopt this attitude as women, yeah. okay? Like, rate ourselves way more, put ourselves on a pedestal. There's a million people, like billions of people that we could be. South Africa, Germany, Even France, in the UK, like, venture UK. to the... The next village over from, like, if you live in the countryside, will have, like, four eligible bachelors, probably. It's just a matter of, you know, the timing and, like, finding <laughs> someone else. What did you say? <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> like, that's awfully long way to go to get <laughs> No, but, like, that's... Sometimes we forget we how have, big the close, world yeah, is. Yeah, we do. And we close ourselves off because it's, it's the fear of the unknown and it's, like, all we know. But I do... I'm going to be brutally honest here with you. I think that you and Sam's relationship is dead in the water. So I think he knows he's pushed past that boundary of initially cheating on you and whatever and he's just going to keep doing it because you know, he knows that you're just going to forgive him because you're mm-hmm. too scared to leave him. He's comfortable probably with, with, mm-hmm. with that and he's okay with that decision. And you're sparking up an attraction with one of his best friends which just shows you how lit, how far, how little far, far afield you have to go to actually find yeah. another attraction. You're finding it in your boyfriend's friendship group. I, Do I not literally be don't have anything to add. I think that was the best advice you've ever given, Pash. <laughs> it was unbelievable, wasn't Thanks. it? Oof. She's fresh after her two coffees. Fresh minded. She is. She's clear, spruce. clear headed. She's full taking of my fuel. The eye on. Okay, Melissa, you're next. Okay. Hey girls, I'm in my late twenties, and I've been with my boyfriend for almost two years. He's everything I look for in a guy. Funny, smart, dress as well, and is going and is over and is over going out all the time. So I fully trust him. God, that's lovely when a guy gets that mm. stage. Oh my god, it's heaven. It is heaven. Kind of they just want to stay in. And it's lovely. Yeah. He's extremely hardworking, but at the point where I feel like he's becoming a workaholic. It feels like his job is getting in the way of our relationship. This is really a pinnacle point, but something that I feel like we have to adjust to. Mm. He has to work most weekends, always finishes late and is too tired to do anything. I try and plan things, but his work has become such priority that that I feel like I'm 
the only one putting effort in. He'll tell me he misses me, so I know he's not becoming totally disinterested, but he's too involved in work and feels like he forgets about me. Over Christmas, we barely did anything cute and festive, and I feel like I missed out. I had to go home for 10 days and I didn't get to see him. I love him, but I want more action. We briefly discussed his work habits and he said he'll try and change, but I'm worried he never will. How do you balance work and your relationship and have there been, ever been moments which you've had to chat to Jamie or Toby about how much they're yes. working? So many. I resonate with this so much. Right, best thing you can do. Go on Stephen Bartlett. There's a podcast oh. by a woman called Esther. She is she like dark skin, dark hair. Think so. Oh, elder lady, amazing. I don't think she's oh, dark skin, no, dark hair. No, no, there's Grey a really, there's a beautiful woman that does a lot of. I think. And she basically says in it, mm. basically is telling the guy because obviously Stephen Butler, I imagine, is like a workaholic or red, sure. And she's basically giving him advice like you can't ignore your wife, and when you think that you're or your girlfriend or whatever, when you think that you're giving her the attention she needs, but they can tell you're distracted with work. Like you can't give your work more priority than your relationship. Mm. Make him listen to that. Does wonders. I think that... I think it's got to be an off button. It's a difficult one because you want them to, to succeed. And obviously it's like they want to put in so much effort whilst they're younger and in the short term so that when they're older maybe you can have a certain life and you can enjoy things together like there's a lot of sacrifices that sometimes have to be made and you might have to go okay fine my relationship's going to be on the back foot on the back burner for a while I'm not going to get as much attention as I necessarily would but I'm okay with that I'm going to support mm, him so right. and then you know in a three in a few years it will be worth it and then he will be able to take me on that gorgeous holiday once a year where he turns his phone off for like 10 days or something like that. I don't know. Or it's like, I think you, you have know, to really get things in advance and just say, we're going to have a no phone day for, for three days. Like I've got a friend who's got a workaholic boyfriend who literally works until 3am. She never, ever really spends time with him or sees him. But he's very good at being like, right, that one weekend, our anniversary, your birthday, my birthday and a random other few weekends and then one holiday a year, they just go and he turns his phone off. I think that's great advice, but I think ultimately you've got to work out like what you need like some yeah, sometimes some that's girls, not okay with you that's gonna be sweet and like you know but some girls need like their love language is affection and yeah. attention it might just make you miserable I think you've got to just like really think about it you've got to speak to him like and be like look I understand why you're doing it but is there some way we can compromise and if not like you know how are we going to fix it or how are we going to manage it and you can just work out you've got to just come together on it and work out a way like a strategy yeah to manage it I think that that is... And you're going to manage it, whether it's doing that or he has to have an hour a day or like you eat dinner at the same time or something. You're going to find a way to have some quality time. Exactly. Like he has to have a, a, like a rule in place where like he'll come home and even if, as you, Sophie said, like it's a, an hour at dinner Fine, and you don't sweet. talk and he doesn't have his phone at the table. Those like, it's also like sometimes the lack of intimacy that can come with a workaholic mm -hmm. because they get home, they're too exhausted. Mm -hmm. There's no intimacy there. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. tough because then you feel unloved. I think you've really got to be so honest and it's mm. not something you can do on your own. Like you are a relationship. You have to work together on this to solve it. And yeah. he needs to understand and you need to be understanding to him and his totally. needs and that he's trying to build a career and a future and provide for you. Which ultimately and your is family. for you and your family, and yeah. So you've got to just really come together and like do it in a very loving, gentle, soft way. And, and you, a patient way. It might yeah, not happen overnight. It might totally. be something that happens gradually over like six months, a year. I don't know. Because if you really love habits. him, you need to mm -hmm. adjust and be patient together, I guess. It's a difficult one. Okay, right, I'm going to read the last one. I'm dilemma three. I've been with my boyfriend for almost four years. And for the last 18 months, we have been sa saving to buy a house together. This is a big move. I've been working really hard to save money and made a lot of sacrifices to reach my goal. A few months ago, I reached my target and started to look into booking an appointment with a mortgage advisor. And my boyfriend re revealed his secret. No, what? He told me he had no savings due to the fact he gambled all of his money away. Oh my fucking God. I was absolutely heartbroken no. after talking with his family. I stayed with him to help him through it. Gambling addiction is an Ill illness and I understand it's hard to stop. It, this is this is so tough. Like I've no, I know people that have like had so Do many you? problems from this. I don't know anyone. However, I have found out that 
Oh my God. What? However, I have found out that he spent hundreds of pounds to subscribe to another girl's OnlyFans. Oh, I don't no. care that he watches porn, <laughs> but I find it so disrespectful that he's giving money to another girl instead of saving his house for his next step in my relationship. <laughs> We can blame this on like he's got a gambling problem, but he's got paying a another chick to pay her mortgage is quite yeah, something else. That's quite something. For me, else. this is a jumpable offense. You can't be giving <laughs> another girl thousands of pounds. Like I'm meant to be saving with my girlfriend by myself. I think he's house. obviously got a problem. Clearly, I think he's got a really big problem, yeah. and you need to like go to a therapist. I think then you potentially needs to be some sort of a rehabilitation step in this. Yeah, because like, it is this a problem. Is, I don't know enough about it, and I. I don't like I'm not knowledgeable enough on it so it's a really hard one to say but that's that's pretty peak I can understand why because you think oh this one will be the next round where I just hit the jackpot and you think that you can do it and you can do it it's like people who buy the lottery ticket it's definitely something that he needs help with but I don't think that this is to be confused with cheating and I kind of think if he's paying other girls on OnlyFans specifically I just think it's Spending hundreds on a girl is another thing. I think it's just like, do you That's need That's another this? source of, of... You have to know whether you love him enough and know to, that there are issues here that need to be solved. Yeah. You can for sure solve them, but it's ultimately you can't solve them. He has to solve them himself. So it's whether you want to put yourself through, through the stress that, uh, of waiting for him to fix himself because you can't do anything. And he might not ever, anything. you know... Yeah. He might it might not be something change. that he wants to do for the rest of his... Like, ultimately, if it was me and my boyfriend was oh, spending no. all that money on it... The gambling thing is... This is I actually want to put these as two separate issues. I think they're very together. Do you? Yeah, he's obviously got... I think paying for a girl to get her tits out is very different to, like, but thinking you're going to win money back. No, but it's an addiction. Mm. It's the same thing. He's gambling. It's an addiction. He's doing it for an endorphin, endorphin, endorphin rush. Hit. He's wanking over a girl and spending shitloads of money, again, for an endorphin rush. Like, they're so linked. So I yeah. feel like... This is probably... That's an issue. He needs to go get help. Do you want to be responsible for, for him? That. And you need to know you, he might not change and you might not be able to fix you. It's very out of your control, sadly. I think you have to decide, yeah. Ultimately, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'm not no, strong not for me. I'm either. not. I'm not strong enough to deal with strong that. Enough to and it would just that. be, it's just not what you need. You don't have kids and it's just not what you need at this stage in your life. We are not as experts, experts on this. We're not therapists. We're not doctors. We're not health advisors. We don't know much about this, but we're just giving advice you know, as if it was me or, or you, you. But please follow professional advice. There's a lot of help online, especially for gambling addiction and stuff like that. So make sure that, you know, you're taking professional steps. We have a story time. Now I'm really excited to share this with you. Are you ready, Melissa? I'm Settle ready. On in. Okay. This is inspired by the Barcelona boy saga. Whew, I have my own Barcelona inspired horror story. I'm. Can you imagine if this is actually like the same boys done it to her? Wild. Oh my god! I really am just desperate to meet the. Me too. Boss. He really let us down with that. Didn't I want. He? I'm desperate. I need to have another like, gander. What he looks like. We should have a poster of him, like a wanted poster oh around my the god, office. We should. Anyone sees Barca boy? Okay, I used to work in an office alongside a male colleague. Our first conversation was about his recent breakup, and as I'd just broken up with my boyfriend, we bonded over Gorgeous. being single. We became flirty at work, mm. and things fizzled when he told me that he was going on holiday with his mates. Mm. After he came back, we went on our first proper date and continued spending more time together. No. He told me that his ex was living in the house they'd bought together and that he was currently living with his parents. No, no. No, sick. So no. for the first two months of us being together, we would go and stay in hotels. No! no! This He's is red flag really... written all Ooh, over vomit. it. Vomit. Once we've been seeing... Also, boy taking me to a hotel so fucking seedy. It's no. so seedy. We need to... I need to stop swearing. Once, we, once we've been seeing each other for a while, he then began staying over at mine. He was really keen to book holidays, so we planned a trip to Barcelona. Oh my God, I'm never going home holidays. Nor me. It scares me. We booked the holiday, but two weeks before we went away, things started to get suspicious. His ex-girlfriend's name would keep popping up on his phone, and every time I would call him, he would make an excuse about why he couldn't talk to me. He's not he's, he's not an ex-girlfriend. It's a current girlfriend. It's, she's live. She's there. She probably sat on his leg. Oh, God. Even though we argued about his ex, he showed real commitment to going away with me and paid for the entire trip. We went away to Barcelona, and it was so romantic. The only thing that bothered me bothered me was that he was on his phone a lot whilst we were away what the fuck 
Mm. On the way back to the airport, I saw his ex's name pop on, on his phone again and we got into a huge argument. I said, I needed some space when we go back to the UK. I got back and was scrolling on TikTok oh my when I came across a video oh which featured my boyfriend with another girl. Oh my God. No! It showed that whole year. It showed that whole year together and showed that he'd been with her the entire time we'd been together and that when he was on holiday with his mates, they'd been, he'd been away with her. I blocked him on everything and reached out to his girlfriend. She told me that they'd been together for over two years. They lived together. <gasps> they had a dog together. They lived together. That's why, he, I know when he was, I was staying at my parents' house. Sorry, and I never just been to his, I was like, like the that he hadn't got over. Like, I didn't know that they'd no. never broken up. She also told me she just a week before he took me on out on our first date that she found out she was pregnant and they were expecting a baby together. He's a sick idiot. So to summarize, the oh guy I thought was... Oh my God, I've got goosebumps. So to summarize, the guy I thought I was with was a lying father to be who not only lied to me and her, but to every person he worked with. The moral of the story is that Barcelona and boys don't go well together. Sorry. I'm never going to Barcelona again. I'm, I'm never going to go to Barcelona with a boy. What? I'm not going full stop. It's bad vibes, bad energy. I'm really sorry. She was pregnant. I'm upset that's too broken. What a pig. A what a sad, sadistic pig. Why didn't he? Oh my God, I can't. Like, why wouldn't he just break up with her if he felt like he didn't want to be with why her? Why are like, that's something wrong. That That's not well in the head to me. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Sorry, it's you not definitely right. made the right decision by telling her, but then it really stresses me out that she would have been pregnant and finding out that stressful information. Do you know what I mean? And that's not like a one-off, that's not like a one-off cheat. It's like a oh. fully blown affair. Fuck. Is that like I love you guys. You're fucking boss bitches. He's not worth your time. You're so much better than this. And like we said before earlier on in the episode, there are so many guys out there. And I'm really happy that you went and told the girlfriend. I feel like you've made completely you you all the right together. moves in that whole scenario. And that could have happened to anyone. That's really shit. You know what? I think this has taught us. We need to do a deed bit more we need to be a little bit more suspect of people and not so trusting because there's some real shits out there in the world if you want to find out anything about anyone do you know who you can find out who ruby adler she knows right let's get ruby on everything about everyone to tell us if i ask her i'm like i want to know i want to know things about toby's ex blah 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 she told me so much information how did she find out she actually just got knew who she was and like knew who she was before i right i'm gonna be calling ruby just so great like right let's get ruby on and she needs to tell, give us some detective. And your friend Bella's the same. Bella is the same. She's a detective. Oh, Bella Smith. She's great. Detective. Chrissy's also the same. Oh my God, well, there we Chrissy's, go. Chrissy's sorted. Chrissy's full-time job at it. She's so good. She can Stop. tell you everything. Yeah. That all good. We're just not that good. We're just a bit stupid. We've got, them. we've got our mates doing it. Yeah, that's why. We need to, we just rely on them. Right, okay, we've got a tiny question. What are our favorite perfumes at the moment? Mine is always Jo Malone English Pear. Mine's just by Rodeo Gypsy water, but no one can bloody smell it on me, which is I can. Upsetting. I just smell it earlier. I was like really nice, but I never often smell it on you. Oh, people never smell it. No one ever compliments me on it either. So I'm like, maybe it's the same. I'm not to lying. Change. I can't ever smell a perfume on you. You always smell lovely, but it's not like a overwhelming. You know, like people smell a perfume. I love Ruby Adler smells a perfume. Baccarat. Every, every time I see I her. I know. I just wish that I will back her out for a bit, but people said I smell like mothballs. I don't I don't like it. Toby wore it for a bit and I was like, I'm I am i am relating it to too many people that wear it. Emily so. Backwell, Baccarat. Does she? Yeah. Oh no, she's Maison Francaise. Is that Maison right? Margiela? Yeah. Okay, so I we mean, love you. Love you guys. Enjoy the Mean Girls if you're going to see it. Yeah, Please go send see us, it. Send us some nice photos if you like at the cinema with your gals some or anything stories, like that. Yeah, some and, te and tell us your thoughts. We love you. Love you so see much. See you next week. Bye.